Welcome to another edition of Bear Bets. I'm your host, Chris Bear Felica. Jeff Schwartz is here with me. We'll have the gambling uh, group chat coming up later in the uh, later in the show. No, uh, no Sammy P this week. I don't know why. No, he's, he's got other things going cool. on this week. He's, he's too cool for us. For, yeah. it's, it's basically it. But we'll all be here, which is great. So uh, kind of an all-encompassing deal this week. We've got NFL playoffs. We've got all the, the coaching news. Um, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, allow you to smile and pump, pump, pump your chest a little bit and, and exhale yeah. with the yeah. fact that your arch rival did not win a national yes. championship on Monday night. They did not. Um, it's so it's so interesting um, when you get access to watch the the film, all twenty two, right? Which luckily I have I have access to do, and it it always changes your opinion on games because. There's a saying that that I love that that uh, we use in the offensive line room a lot is that it's never as good as you think and never as bad as you think, mm-hmm. and so I come out of that game on Monday night thinking to myself, well, dude, Michigan won the line of scrimmage. They were definitely deeper on defense, right? I mean, the, right. the depth they had on defense it was like a Mich- a pro Michigan take, Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. Like there's, and you watch the film and you're like, Washington had a lot of opportunities, yeah. man, mm-hmm. and some of that came from Michigan forcing Penix's hand, throwing the ball early, but some of that was just. Just missed missed opportunities. Yeah. They they just and, Washington and the Dylan Johnson injury. We talked about that being a huge factor in the game. It certainly made Washington very one dimensional. Um, but Michigan's the best team now. Maybe Georgia makes a claim for that. I don't know. But Michigan all season long, they kept winning. They won their five six toughest games down down the stretch. Um, but Washington had their opportunities to win that game and just didn't do it. No, they they did, and it was clear after those first three drives whatever adjustment they, they basically said quarterback's going to have to throw to beat us. And we don't think he can. And it was a one possession game yeah. for a hell of a, and I sent you guys in a bunch of, I said, JJ McCarthy is going to have to make one throw he did. in order for them to hang on and win this game. And then the throw to love on tight end yeah. really was the biggest play of the game. And it led them to ultimately go down and screw <laughs> the McCarthy discussion. And we'll have time to talk about him as a pro guy, but I, I don't understand the top 15 stuff is that there was a early in the game there was an example like he hit i think it was wilson on a deep over round on a play action pass like a beautiful throw over the linebacker in front of the safety very next play he overthrows a guy by two yards it's like i'm like a little st- five yard stop route uh empty prote- like like that's he's so hit or miss and the throw to, to loveland was an incredible yep. throw yep. And McCarthy could do some of that it's just not what their offense is so um look a, a good game it was nice to have Someone from the South not win the championship for once. Um, and uh, college football's over. We have the NFL, Bear. It's NFL Dude, playoff time. Yes. We have some Fired great games this week. Six games this week. It's going to be awesome. Do you like Do you like the six? Do you, do you like the two, three, one? No. I'd rather just do two and two. Just, I'd rather have three and three, I mean. Really? I mean, I'm never going to complain about more football. But Eagles, Bucks, like, if you shove that on, like, Saturday, I think it's okay. If okay. my night football was, was Lions- and 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 Rams, I'd feel probably differently about that game. But Eagles Bucks is sort of like, yeah. Eh, you, you ESPN, can... here you go. Here's your here's your Monday night game. Uh, look, uh, Fox getting Cowboys Packers is probably the the best scenario we could ever have for this company. <laughs> it's it's kind it's kind of like the remember the old it was the old the NBC promos that they used to do on uh on like for the previous week like coming up. Bronco. This is like early to mid eighties Broncos. Raiders, yes, or the Jets take on the Bengals. Yes, Rams, Lions, or the Eagles take on the Bucks. Yes. It, it, it's like that. Yes, the or. <laughs> yes, the or. So the Jets um, were always the or growing up. Uh, I'm, or. I'm sorry, Bear. I'm sorry. You'll be the or next year too. Oh no, yeah, I was going to say yeah. we'll definitely be the or yeah. next week. Um, all right, you want to start getting your wagers? Yes, I have two. Well, one. Well, I have a couple. I have, I have a couple in the in the group chat that we'll talk about. I got two games and i got yeah. two that i didn't talk about we could talk about later okay well gamma group chat covers a lot of it but let's get yeah, to the, the one game you you have right now philadelphia eagles at Tampa bay bucks bucks are getting three points eagles finished 11 and 6 they lost five of their last six games Tampa bay won the nfc south after a thrilling nine nothing victory over the panthers <laughs> the bucks uh, are 11 and 6 against the spread second best record in the nfl for that so um they uh they 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 do cover games pretty well I, look, I don't the, think the Eagles are very good. I, I think the the accumulation of the games after the long go, going to the Super Bowl last year, I think the injuries 
is certainly now taking a toll. You've got a, I mean, Hertz, who knows what direction his finger is uh, pointing this week. Uh, receiver injuries, I think there are issues in the locker room. Clearly losing both uh, Steichen and Gannon have had major effects. I don't think Tampa is really any good either, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking Tampa here plus a three, and it wouldn't shock me at all to, to, to see them win. I, I, I think the Seagulls defense can be had, and, and as long as Baker is in one piece, I, I think he and that offense could potentially have a big game. Even though this is an offensive team that hasn't scored an offensive touchdown, yeah. I think, in two weeks, right? But this is through the – yeah, they lost the Saints two weeks ago, right? Um <sighs> The Eagles, I think, are just in a bad place. Um, they are hurt, first of all. They're clearly not the same team they were last year, especially on defense. And I go back to this, Bear. I, I think the goal was to play well in the first half against the Giants, and they absolutely did not. No. And I think they're just bad right now. And it's okay to say that. Last year was great. This year, they're not very good. Sometimes it just happens. And sometimes it just happened that way. Tampa Bay, to me, is not great. But get, getting three points, I feel like this is sort of the spot to, you know, to take Tampa Bay here. Um, so I'm with you on this wager. I made this wager uh, myself as well before I knew you were even taking this. So I feel good to be on your side this time. If I'm on the other side, I typically lose that bet. Um, all right, gambling group chat time. It's a long one today. Yeah. It always goes longer than we think because we have so much fun yeah. talking about everything. Yeah, we, we talk, look, we talk NFL, obviously. We talked a little bit of coaching retirement news. We sneak in some Nick Saban in there, some college football as well. So here's a gambling group chat. It's me, Bear, and it's Will Hill. Take a listen. Gambling group chat is back. Myself, Jeff, and Will are here this week. Sammy got sick of us finally. It only took about 18 weeks to say enough is enough. I'm done. I'm done with these guys. But uh, Sammy will be back uh, next week. So uh, it's Jeff, just Jeff, Will, and myself. And so we'll have a, we'll have a little more airtime. Sammy's such a hog and. Unfortunately, we're not going to get any breaking bartender news, but maybe we'll get that a little uh, a little later on at some time. But regular season is done. A super wild card weekend is here. And it's it's really an interesting weekend because, I mean, there, there, I think there's so many games here where you can make a case, I think, for either. I, I, I know some people have made a case for Pittsburgh a little on the money line, uh, but I, I can't see it. But. Like Cleveland, Houston, I think you can make a great case for both sides. I know everybody seems to like Kansas City, uh, Green Bay, Dallas. I I, I I like Dallas there. Rams, Detroit, Philly, Tampa. Like like the, the, these games, I think are about as closely lined as I can remember, and uh, it should make for a pretty exciting weekend. Well, shouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, the NFL is hard enough to beat as it is. Every week you get, what, 15, 16 games. Now with only six, the books have more times to more time to sharpen their knives, get their numbers perfect. So the fact that the lines are tight shouldn't be surprising. I would say this, with, with only six games and a few of them, I think three or four of them lined right around three, make sure you're shopping. Make sure you're getting the best of the number with these games lined around three. If you like the favorite, make sure you're finding the two and a half. If you like the dog, make sure you're getting the full three because – I mean, three is the key number. Wouldn't be shocked if Browns, Texans, Rams, Lions, any of these games landed on a field goal. So make sure you're shopping around. But uh, look, look, it, it's worth you know repeating. You don't have to bet every game. These are all standalone games. Everyone wants action on every yes. game. You can find action different ways: teasers, props, totals. Uh, the, like you said, these lines are tight. Not that we don't. Not that I don't like any games. We'll get into some of these games. There are a couple I like. Uh, but but make sure you're shopping and make sure you're disciplined too. If you're betting every single one of these games, like these lines are pretty tight and they're tight for a reason. What, what, what's your thought? You were talking about the two and a half and the three. Uh, are, are you a proponent? Will you, if there are no threes out there, will you buy it up to three all the time just to get that three at insurance and, and lay 120 or, or whatever it might if be? I, if I really want the three, I'll wait for live betting. You're usually going to get one. If you guys, if you guys pay attention to the live lines, the live markets are so sensitive with well, the line will be two and a half all week. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, they kick off and they, the other team that's favored gets a couple first downs and all of a sudden you see three, three and a half. They, they fluctuate very quickly. So I don't I'd rather not buy the points that you're always laying a little extra juice on the live line. But if you want if it's at two and a half and you really want the three, three and a half, just wait. I mean, the other team gets the ball near midfield or your team goes three and out. You're going to get your three and a half. Can also tease the two and a half too, right? Like in the Houston game, sure. I mean, you know, you put it to eight and a half or 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 even nine and a half. I mean, you're, that's a 
Houston's probably covering nine and a half, and there's obviously opportunities for you know a team like the Rams to be included in a teaser, like that Tampa Bay to be included in a teaser. So sometimes they go two and a half, and just you put in a teaser, obviously, um, and you make it work that way. I I think this weekend, guys, feels like the culmination of what we talked about all season long. We talked last week about, okay, if it's not the Ravens and Niners, who is it? And we went through the list of teams, and we're like, I, I don't know. It could be this team. could be that team. These lines show that, right? I mean, you have Tampa Bay at home. They're a three-point dog. The Rams are on the road, three-point dog. I mean, those are those are close. They're toss-up games. Houston, Browns, toss-up game. Obviously, Buffalo and Pittsburgh, that number is big because the Steelers are without their best defensive player, and they have no quarterback, essentially. Um, then, you obviously, Chiefs-Dolphins is four points. I mean, all these games are close because – Outside of those two number one seeds, there's not a team right now. I think any of us could say they're playing this weekend. That's a team that's winning the Super Bowl. Um, and so I think that's why these lines are so close. It really will make sure for some competitive games starting Sunday, uh, Saturday afternoon, I should say, Saturday afternoon. I, I guess the one team, to answer your question, we had the conversation, I would say Dallas would be the team. And the only reason I would say that is they should beat Green Bay this week. Yeah. And then they'll probably get a rematch against the Lions, potentially, who I think there'll be so much narrative around that game. I think they'll beat the Lions. And then you're probably, you're probably going to San Francisco, and you'll probably be around a touchdown dog or so, I would think. But And, and, and maybe there's a scenario where their passing game gets going and the Niners' secondary struggles, and maybe McCaffrey's yeah. cap isn't fully healthy. So, like, if we were looking to beat San Francisco or Baltimore with the team, I think Dallas is probably the team that has the most value right now in terms of a, uh, if you're looking for kind of some type of future bet, either win the NFC or the Super Bowl. Do I think they will ultimately? No, I think San Francisco will, yeah. but uh, you could put yourself in, in some type of position. They have the easier path to get there than than than, than the Chiefs do, but obviously I mean, the Chiefs is the answer, right? I mean, the Chiefs have a Super Bowl caliber defense. We clearly their defense is fantastic. If they can get one more guy to catch the football, <laughs> we know Travis Kelsey can. We know Rice can. Someone else, guys, if one other person can catch the football, isn't this team live to win the AFC? It's a tougher road, right? Be. It's through Baltimore, uh, excuse me, through Buffalo most likely, then through Baltimore. Um, but it feels like that's it, those are the four teams, right? Chiefs and Cowboys, Niners, and Ravens. Are, are you on Buffalo? Anyone on Buffalo? I mean, I just – Will, I was going to say, we, we, we talked about those Buffalo bets uh, six weeks ago, what it seems like now, and they were great bets. But after watching the Bills the last couple of weeks, like – Everyone, oh, I don't want to play the Bills in the playoffs, but now you watch their offense the last couple of weeks. Like, are you really concerned about that team? Like, would you are you shaking in your boots to face to face them? You know, it's funny. I think it was a month ago or so they played the Chiefs right around a month ago, and they were 50 to one. And I, I gave it out on the show. I was like, hey, I've made dumber bets than the Bills, 50 to one to win a Super Bowl. They they haven't lost since. Now they're the two seed. Now they're like six to one. And I don't like the bet the bet any more than I did that when it was 50 to one. It's funny. <laughs> I just I, exactly. I just don't trust them. They leave they leave you feeling empty. Uh, I will say, looking ahead, if Chalk holds and we get a Bills Chiefs playoff game. That's the best one because mm. the Chiefs, like Mahomes, finally has to play off a playoff game on the road. The Bills trying to exercise the demons. The Chiefs have given them nightmares in the playoffs. Finally, if you're the Bills, you get the Chiefs in your building. Finally, you know, you, you get a diminished Chiefs team. If you're the Bills and you get the Chiefs next week, if you can't beat them this year, it's like, man, you have to start to wonder yeah, if you right. can ever beat this team. So that's one. That's a juicy matchup if Chalk holds. I'm, I'd be excited to see that Chiefs at the Bills. So, you know, we could be looking at if Chalk holds. And again, that's, you know, we're talking about six games here. A lot of things can right. happen. A Lions Cowboys rematch, and we're going to have to hear about that call, that missed call on that Saturday night for a whole week, but that's still a good game. Uh, Eagles right. 49ers, that, a rematch of last year. You'd think San Fran, Fran would win, but the AFC bracket is really juicy. I mentioned Chiefs, Bills, Ravens, Browns, Flacco going back to uh, Baltimore, all the history with the Ravens or Browns. That, those are four really good matchups if Chalk does hold. Yeah, and you have, you have the narrative you know, Lamar with the one playoff win, and can he beat? the Ravens former quarterback, but I guess let's just start. I mean, they're only six games. So I think they just kind of have a, a tree top discussion on all, all six of them. And if we like something great, if not uh pass, but uh, the, the Texans in their traditional early Saturday afternoon <laughs> playoff game, no TJ Yates, um, no Brian Cushing, no D'Amico Ryan's on the field. He is the coach. No Matt Schaub. Was no, it, Matt, no Matt Schaub, no, Matt, Ex exactly. Who was that Matt Schaub? Was it uh, who was the backup for the Ra the Raiders in that game? Because Carr got hurt, and then, then the Raiders Texans play like a backup. Oh, there was a game. There was a yes, they Connor did. Cook. That's what it was. Yes. It was a Connor Cook. Was it Matt Schaub? Connor Cook? Yeah, game that's what it was. No, it, was uh, it was Brock Osweiler. Uh, 
Brock Osweiler. There we go. Osweiler, Connor Cook. Is that what it was? Yes. The, yep. The Chiefs won a game, I think, thirty nothing, a playoff game in Houston one year as well. It's always the first game of it of this of the uh, of the playoff slate. This one's fun, right, guys? They played what three weeks ago? That but CJ Stroud didn't play. I think to me, you throw that game out. Uh, something I found pretty interesting. I don't know if this changes the way you guys feel about this game. So the Browns' defense at home, guys, allows thirteen point nine points per game, number one in the NFL. On the road, near thirty points a game, twenty nine point six points on the road. That's worst in the National Football League. Obviously, they're on the road here in Houston. I don't know if that matters or how that actually plays in, but it's kind of, look, we have enough games now to see that that's a real thing. So I'm curious if that plays a role in how you handicap this game. To me, I would just, I would take the points. I'm getting the better quarterback with Stroud. I'm getting the points and I'm the home team. You mentioned the road home splits are uh, pretty emphatic. So I don't feel great about it. I wouldn't be surprised if Cleveland won this game by by three. But if I'm getting the three with Houston, and again, don't take the two and a half. If you if you can only get two and a half, just wait. See if you can get a three to pop up either right before the game starts to the line. There are threes out there, so it's not like you're giving out you know a stale line or a fake line. To me, it would be Texas plus three. I do worry a little bit the matchup. Schwartz is a very good defensive coordinator, a, a very well respected defensive coordinator. Him versus a rookie quarterback, that would give me some, some, some concern. So if I had to play the side, I'd play, or if I had to play the total, I'd play the under 44 and a half. I could see a little feeling out process early. You would think, just from a schematic standpoint, Amari Cooper torched them a few weeks ago on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. They played each other 200 something yards. You'd think that's the first thing and the last thing the Texans talk about every day in practice before they go to bed, when they wake up. All right, Cooper's not doing this to us again. So people that you know are thinking of playing the props, all right, Cooper killed him last time. He's going to kill him again. Probably not going to be that easy, wouldn't you think? I I'm, I 100% agree because they're going to spend every second making sure that that that, that doesn't happen. Also, um, Joe Flacco throws a ton of interceptions. Is there like a Houston special, a Houston defensive score option I'm sure to wager? Is. I mean, I'm sure you can find it. I don't know if it's posted now, but I feel like that's a, a decent wager to make him. He, guys, he throws turns the ball over a lot. I, Flacco, one turnover probably is an expensive price. I don't know if you want to pay that, but sort of like a Flacco pick six, uh, D, Houston defensive score feels like something that's a, a decent enough wager that feels a little bit, you know, it'd be easier to, to swallow than Flacco. The interception's got to be what my one fifth minus one fifty. Oh, they, yeah, they, they're definitely the favorite. And I wonder if they even if they, if there's an over under one and a half out there somewhere. That might even be something to uh to look into because, like you said, you would expect them to 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 throw the ball quite a bit. And I'm looking right now if I could find a, a interception prop. Some sometimes don't, those aren't really up at, yeah, uh, at certain times. It, it, it's some. I'm, I'm just I'm just kind of I'm just kind of going down the. <clears throat> The, uh, the 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 Texan schedule here. The, just I, the the thing that I'm I'm curious about worry, is what, sort of what Will mentioned, right? Like rookie quarterback. Yeah, they just won the division say. last week in a dramatic fashion, right? They had to win their game and then watch Jacksonville lose their game. Um, and I wonder if there's a little bit of like, not we're happy to be here, but just not ready for this big moment. I had a coach tell me something uh, when, when I was a young player, and it, it really holds true. Um, there are different speeds to the season. So there's speed of, of week one, where everyone's fresh, excited to play. Then you sort of get into the speed of the, of the regular season, then there's a little playoff push. When a lot of teams are playing for the playoffs, it speeds up a tiny bit, right? Now, I've only played in a wild card game, a divisional round game. I never got past, you know, those rounds. But Why not? Every, it's my fault. It's actually my yeah. fault. It's actually, uh, it's Jake DeLone's fault one time. He threw six interceptions. <laughs> the other time, oh, uh, Arizona, it's uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, I was a rookie that oh. season. Uh, then in 13, it should be in 12, uh, 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 Will's Vikings, who we went to the Packers with uh, Joe Webb and lost 27 to 3 in that game. That's a night um, game, right? Yeah, night game after we just beat the Packers six yep. days beforehand. And then in 13, the Chiefs, we were up 28 points in the third quarter in, in, uh, in uh, Indianapolis and lost that game. Oh, I remember that. So one I've, too. I've been part of some really bad, ter- so, some losses. But the point I'm making is that every every round the game gets faster right there's a different speed and pace to the game the the focus of the players for some reason it, it just the focus you're, you're you're honed in so well not a lot of mental mistakes not a lot of physical errors you, you know you're playing the the best of the best you're ready to play each weekend and then obviously it comes to Super Bowl now I, I've not played that game before I've heard from my brother who won with the Chiefs and heard other players talk about sort of the the way that game feels right so you know the Browns have been here a couple of years ago, right? Flacco's been in the playoffs many times. He knows what it feels like. The 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 Texas team hasn't, right? They they don't they don't, they don't know what this feels no. like to play in this moment. We'll talk about this 
with the Packers, especially in my opinion, is they head to Dallas. The Houston's at least at home. They get juice from the home crowd. But I do wonder eventually if that sort of wears off and the, and the Browns' physicality on both sides of the ball, even without their tackles on offense, they, they played well, sort of takes the toll as the game goes on. It's amazing that with all the – talk about injuries for certain teams throughout the year, the, the Jets with the injuries they've had, just being a Jets fan, it's other like the number of injuries the Browns have like, oh, yeah. lose both tackles, lose your starting running back, guys on – like. I think Delpit might play though. I was though, gonna right? say He's... that. I said I was gonna. I didn't know if Delpit was coming back. Well, I don't. They don't have to activate him today, but he is back at practice. I'm not, look. That doesn't handicap the game differently for me. But having better players is always sure than not having you know than having worse players. Yeah, as someone with Browns futures, um, obviously I'm rooting for him. I, this is one of those games, like Will was saying. I'm not looking to jump in here because I I could see Flacco turning into a pumpkin, or I I could see what you were talking about the speed of the game and playoff pressure uh, finally getting to. Uh, to maybe see Jay Stroud. Do you think it helps Houston the fact that Stroud played so well in a college football playoff game against Georgia and to have D'Amico Ryans, who has had that experience with the 49ers in Super Bowls and NFL yeah. championship games? Does that help te the Texans, do you think? It it probably helps him message right to his team about this game. But I would say that and it probably helps him be relaxed in the moment. But for the players who have never been in this before, there's a different juice, man, in the stadium and playoff games. And, and again, you're at home. So that definitely is different than for the Packers playing on the road in that situation. But yeah, look, anytime you've been in this game, I think it helps. Look, go back to the college football playoffs. I mean, Harbaugh's been this moment many times. Kalen DeBoer been the moment. It's not why the Washington lost, but you know, he he that team was ready to play. He Kalen DeBoer can talk to his team about being that. He played in the NIA championship for so many years, right? Harbaugh has been the playoffs so many years. That's, I think, important to, to help your team prepare and message for the week. And D'Amico Ryan's having that experience would certainly help. But when you get to game day, that he can't do anything about it now. You know what I mean? He's not, he's not playing. Game two Saturday, the, the game I think that most people are talking about this week. Uh, Miami, after looking so bad on offense in the second half against Buffalo last week, all those injuries going on the road to Kansas City where the weather is going to be about five degrees, maybe. We're up to four and a half here. Total is 44, pretty much consensus. I get the whole weather dynamic, Will, but don't we need to look at, like, that game last year during the regular season where, where the Dolphins lost a close game was frigid weather. Like, they very easily could have won that game. So it's not like they In played. The snow? Yeah. They, it's, it's, it's not as cold when it actually snows. It's a meteorologist over here now. Like I, it, it, it doesn't snow when it's like negative 16 degrees. There's a big difference, guys, between playing in the snow, which I've done a couple times in my career, and playing when it's negative 16 degrees outside. So let's want to make that point, Barry. Okay, it's a little different. Well, that, that, that's what I was, I was going to ask Will's opinion on the game first, because I, I wonder. I was going to say, is there too much of an overreaction? This being that they have played in kind of cold weather before. Jeff does. Jeff seems to think that there's a massive difference here. Will, I, I, I know just from our communications through the week who you are on here and who you like, so I'll just, I'll just let you get after it. Yeah, I meant to double check because I remember that Buffalo Miami game last year. It was a Saturday night. It was right around Christmas. Everyone was like, "Oh, it's going to be a blizzard. It's going to be miserable weather." Remember, it ended up not being that bad. Where it was like maybe high twenties, low thirties. There was a little snow, but the weather wasn't really a factor. The wind wasn't really a factor. I think this week's going to be different. And the reason I like Kansas City here, it's just the perfect storm, no, no pun intended, of short week Ooh. injuries for Miami. I mean, they're so beat up. Their entire defense is hurt, basically. Yeah. They had to play Sunday night. I mean, think about it. This team is in, in, in contention for a one seed all year division. Now they're a six seed. They got to go on the road. Short week. They're hurt. Uh, Kansas City was rested. At, you know, we all know the stats. Andy read off a bye. This is kind of like a bye because they got to rest their guys. I'm sure he was, you know, pinpointing the few teams he would could play, would play, and it already started to work on them. Now the lines inflated because of all of that, but you know, Kansas City winning this game by a touchdown uh, doesn't seem unrealistic to me. And if I had to play the side, I would play uh, an under here. I mean, this game was 21-14 in Germany with pretty much perfect conditions, and that was including mm -hmm. a defensive score. So you didn't get a ton of offense there, and that's when these teams healthy. Hill there, Waddle, uh, I believe everyone played, and we didn't get a ton of offense. So it's hard to get to 44, 45 and a half points I think we're looking at for a total. So it's hard to get to 45 with these two teams. I think Kansas City, no matter – 
who they are as a team, they still carry this reputation of being explosive, offensive first, when we know Jeff mentioned it. They're a defensive first team. They're you know, they're probably going to pound Pacheco here, just try to find somebody who can catch the ball. Maybe he can get Kelsey open, and the week off maybe will help Kelsey. I think maybe that's a factor here. But I, I like the Chiefs here. I think they yeah. get it done. Kelsey mentioned on his, his podcast that the week off was like, he's like, I could chase records or chase championships. You know, like he, he needed that he week off uh, because look, he entered the season hurt. He was hurt week one. When you're 34 and enter the season hurt, you kind of don't get better. And he, that week off was, was important for them. Um, look, I'm not a, a, a trend guy. We don't talk trends very often in this show, but it is worth mentioning that uh, the Dolphins are 0 and 11 when the temperature is below 40 degrees since 2017. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. I don't think it's better for this game just to let no, you know they don't play well in cold weather, players are but, but, but let me explain the cold weather thing very quickly because it's actually not when you're playing. When you're actually playing, you don't feel the, the temperature. It's on the sideline. It's when you warm up, just in your brain, right? You're like, oh, I got to warm up in this cold weather. Okay, got to put more layers on. And then you're on the sideline, things aren't going well, and you're just like looking up at the at the jumbotron, watching other teams score points, and it's miserable outside, and you're freezing, and your toes are cold, and your fingers are cold. It's a, just a mindset, right? It just stinks when you have to go. And and put your hands in front of the heater to go back on the field to go hit someone. It's, it's it's a lot worse when you're losing and it's cold outside. That's where the cold affects. And we've talked about this many times here. The wind is more important. We're talking about this game, the the next game on the slate uh, on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. The wind matters a lot too, and the wind's going to play a factor here as well. So I think Kansas City is seasoned. Uh, you mentioned it, Will. I think Miami's down five pass rushers, right? The That's top five yeah. pass rushers. Yes. So they have to sign Justin Houston. To uh, he's on the practice squad anyways, but obviously former Chief there as well. So I think Chiefs handle this game. Uh, we'll we'll talk the under for my best bet in a little bit. So I have some more nuggets on that one. Doesn't that seem to think maybe the, the Chiefs could just kind of nickel and die on them and just Pacheco just run? Yeah. Like it's fe it feels like that type of game plan where he would be home to just kind of have the time settle yeah. in and just kind of pick his pick his target and they can kind of work their way down the field I, maybe I was score on the, defense the, too I, i'd worry about two his ball oh. dying in the wind yeah. too because two i mean he does not have the arm strength if it's windy it's cold i just i don't, I don't yeah. think he's got the kind of arm to uh to cut through the wind while mahomes does have the arm strength obviously Speaking about nickel and diming, one prop I like in this game, McCall Hardman over 12 and a half receiving yards. He was back healthy last week for the first time in a while. He had 70 yards last week, and obviously, um, you know, he, Mahomes didn't play last week, but they need someone else, right? And, and McCall Hardman has playoff experience in Kansas City. He knows what he's doing. And you look at Kelsey, you look at Rasheed Rice, and someone else. Mahomes doesn't throw the ball to MVS. He does not trust him. We see that week in, week out. McCall Harmon, 12 and a half, especially if Ramsey is covering Rasheed Rice, that feels like a spot to get him some yards. I, I, I like that number. They'll throw the ball on the edge, especially if Kadarius Tony can't play. He's untrustworthy, too. So Hardman, to me, <laughs> is the guy like say. 12 and a half is a low number, Will. I, I like that prop for this game. Yeah, that's I a good that, one. You think they'll a, put uh, Ramsey on, on Rice? Yeah, I, th I think they have to, right? Yeah. I mean, he's the only guy that, that, that Mahomes throws to is a wide receiver. It's interesting because I was I – was I guess we can kind of segue this to the game Monday night because it kind of ties it in. Like, are there any similarities here with the Chiefs and the Eagles? Because like, maybe this the lack of explosion that just the way these teams have finished the year. It's probably just a little because of the type of year they went to the Super Bowl both teams last year. It was a long, physical, yeah. grueling season last year. And now you're you're a little bit older, like you mentioned it with Kelsey. The Eagles are older. Injuries, like it, it's probably just kind of a cumulative effect on last year, the number of games that you played, and then just kind of coming back, and then over the course of this year, just kind of wearing wearing down. And yeah. like I, I I think there's something to that. And uh, Philly is a team right now that I I would want absolutely no part of. And I know Tampa is not good. Uh, at all, but I mean, there were a couple, couple of things in this game I, I thought were were interesting. I like I like the Bucks in this game plus three. Yeah, and, and you can and you were Jeff was mentioning maybe teasing this up uh, a, a little bit before, but Philly their defense over the last what six seven eight games or whatever has been, been probably worst defense in the league. Uh, it just looks like something is wrong in the locker room. They've got injuries. This team. Couldn't get the Cardinals off the field to a couple of weeks ago. They lost to the Giants last week. Yeah, maybe there was a little just like throw in, wave the white flag and get some guys some rest. 
last week, but but there is absolutely nothing that instills any confidence. I, I made the analogy uh, a couple of weeks back about how the or the Eagles are going full 86 Jets on us here, starting off 10 and one, and then finishing up 10 and six. With, and the Jets, oh by the way, did rally and win the wild card game that they had at home before Charlie Steiner proclaimed that the Jets are going to Cleveland when they're up 20 to 10 with four minutes to go before they wind up losing in double overtime after Mark Dastano gets a personal foul. You can tell I've lived this, but this uh, isn't a therapy a session, but it's a podcast. My, it, it, it is. It's, it's just, it's all coming out now. But 20, 20, 27 years later, it's still Browns, 30, Jets, 30, double overtime game. It's 37, but I was born in 86. Yeah, 86. Yeah, it should, it should have been, we should have had a Jets Giants Super Bowl that year, uh, but but we didn't. But anyway, I, I know Tampa was all out to beat Carolina last week. And, and I know, and I know Baker looks like he's just kind of like pieced together by, by duct tape, but. I can't trust Philly at all here, laying points on the road. I, I like the Bucs. I think the Bucs will win the game outright. Boy, I, I will say this. If you bet this game and you lose, you're going to feel like an idiot no matter who you took because if the Bucs fall five minutes, <laughs> well, I'm going to feel like an idiot regardless. Exactly. Right. You're like, Philly's obviously the most, much, much more talented team. And you mentioned the 86 Jets. I'm glad you did. Sometimes when you struggle, I remember the Vikings had a team like this in 2004. They started really well, uh, struggled to the finish line backed into the playoffs needed i think washington to lose to get in so they got in at eight and eight and then they won in green bay sometimes you just get a, a hit the reset button you know what you can flush everything we're zero and zero we start from scratch remember this time last year and i mentioned this game last last week dallas went to washington last year and they needed a massive upset for their game to matter and they said you know what we're not going to get that upset they went through the motions they got killed by washington everyone picked tampa to beat dallas and dallas went in there and killed them not I'm, I'm not confident enough to pick philly but I would worry that I'm just, I, I don't know. I don't like Tampa. Here's the thing. I watched a lot of Tampa Carolina last week and I'm still, my eyes are still recovering Lucky from you. that. Tampa <laughs> yes. was dying to give that game away. Carolina couldn't get in the end yes. zone. Shark fumbles at the one. They had a touchdown call back. They missed a field goal. Baker's limping around. Like I'd love to ideally fade both of these teams. The hard part is they're playing each other. So I just don't know if your examples of teams that struggled and then win the postseason, I mean, it might happen because Tampa's not good, but the Eagles have real issues. I mean, guys, they Injuries tried too. to play hard in the first half. They like they tried to beat the Giants in the first half, yeah. and we're down twenty four nothing. Yeah, because the the, the Cowboys, the Cowboys it, game it was a game. Correct, and they were trying they were trying to play hard. You mentioned the injuries, right? No Smith last week. Then Brown gets hurt, and you see an offense yeah. like without any wide receiving options. And look what happens. And defensively. Jeez. Defensively, Hurts they are up. atrocious. They're twenty. I think they're twenty eighth in DVOA on defense, which is shocking compared to what they were yep. last season. Uh, Barrett, you sent over some wagers to us, some kind of just general. Let's look at the weekend wagers. One of them was Mike Evans. Excuse me. One of them was most receiving yards for a wide receiver on this weekend, guys. Mike Evans was plus eighteen hundred. I kind of like that. Um, you look at, at the Eagles' pass defense. I fired on it, stop, Jeff. Uh, I, I took your advice. I fired on it. Can't stop anyone. Um, and Mike Evans, we know one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. I think one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL. Again, Baker Mayfield's not great. He's okay, but against his Eagles defense, he might look like Tom Brady. So I, I think Evans in, in this spot will plus 1800 feels like a good number for what he can, what damage he can do in this game. I think they're obviously the concerns are like a, a CD lamb or a Puka Nakua or an Almond Ross St. Brown, you know, getting up 150. But uh, to me, plus 1800 for Mike Brown to be the leading receiver of the weekend was good value for me. I like that one. I, I might jump on that. Yeah, the Eagles hit the two-team parlay last week of they got their guys hurt and they didn't win. So you figure, all right, let's let's win. Let's win by ourselves. <laughs> or, or do we rest our guys and we keep them healthy? You didn't do either one. You lost. You feel, you played like crap. You you look like crap, and you got your guys hurt. So not not a good uh, not a good. We don't think with all the coaching craziness going on, we don't think if Philly lost this game, <clears throat> Sirianni would be in trouble, right? That would be too much. I uh, can't see that. I, I saw yeah, that absolutely. Like. Yes. Absolutely. What? It's Philly, man. They I mean, look, <clears throat> they got rid of Doug Peterson ASAP. They got rid of Chip Kelly ASAP. I mean, Chip sure. Kelly had two 10 and six seasons. Then went yeah. six and 10 and got rid of him. They got rid of, again, Peterson. I mean, look. The Peterson, question, what, the year after he went to Super Bowl, yeah, right? One, two years after? I think it doesn't matter when it was. The, the, the yeah. point is this. When you try to when, when you fire a coach, you have, you try to upgrade, right? And now, there's a lot of openings this year, so there might be a lot of options, and you might not get the guy you want. But if you're... Look, Sirianni doesn't call plays, right? He's not a play caller. He's he's not a defensive guy. He's just a, a CEO guy. And if, if you're the CEO guy 
and your team stinks for the last week's six weeks of the season, like that's a, that's a you like you can say like look, let's say you're an offensive play caller and your offense stinks. You can make the case, okay, fine, I'll give up play calling duty. You know, I'll, I'll let someone else call plays or, or defensively, I'll call plays now. What's Siri going to say? I'm going to fire my coaches and hire brand new coaches. I I, I don't know. I just don't know if they're going to be comfortable with him keeping when they could get someone else. I don't know who the someone else is. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, but I think his job is, let's say, not safe if they lose. I'll put it like that. Interesting. That would be a, that would Do be. Do you think it's safe if they lose? That means they've lost six of their last seven games after a Super Bowl run starting 10 and one with a team that regressed all season long. Are they going to blame him? Or are they going to blame Howie Roseman? Like who's going to blame? I take 10, 20 percent. Oh, okay. I think, like yeah, I think there's a chance it could like happen. That. See, I'm always opposed. Look, I, I, I'm opposed I, to firing too. Quit no, firing. I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to fire. I'm opposed to like knee jerk reaction firing. Yeah. yeah, like, like you had a bunch of injuries. Things you, you, you won some games earlier in the year. like that. That might they just might not be that good this year. I mean, because remember earlier in the year we're like, oh, they, oh, they won another game. Oh, they pulled another one out. Like maybe this team just wasn't that good this year, and the sure. record and the record was kind of fake. But what happens when, like, Jason Kelsey retires and Lane's getting up there in age and you have to revamp your defense? Is Sirianni the guy who's going to get all this done with new players? I mean, it's a fair question to ask. I don't, I don't have an answer. I'm asking like, a question like, I don't have like, an answer Like, like, like look, the Patriots game, first game of the year, they very easily could have lost. The Vikings game week right. two was another. Yeah. Both, the, the commanders a ton of the overtime games. game. Uh, the, both commanders game. Cowboys game where, where they – where the Cowboys that threw the ball into the end zone at the end. Chiefs the game, game. Should, like, like they're all, yeah. they're, they're all, all these games that they really should have lost. Yeah. Like, I just don't know if they're that good. I don't, yeah, think I don't watch them. Sure. I don't think they are. Like, remember yeah. McCarthy threw the ball on third. You don't, you don't, you don't watch them as much. The you don't watch them as much as you do. You don't watch them as much as you do Carolina and, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, Tampa. I had Carolina too, man. I watched that game. That was so gross. Oh my God. Go? I, oh, it was awful. Yes. I was, yeah. Oh, I went to like, a nine nothing game. I mean, the, like the Panthers, like one one thing about the NFL, I'm really in college football too. I don't understand. If you're a receiver or a running back, and it's first down in the first quarter, oh, second God, quarter. I why know. are you diving into the end zone like 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 you're trying to win the Super Bowl? Just go out of bounds, dive with the ball low. I mean, he will Shark went like full John Elway winning the Super Bowl. He went full in the air. Arms reached out. By the way, the ball was sort of coming loose already, and like easily just knocked out of his hand. Like, what are we doing, man? It it, it drove me insane. I was so ugh, this is bad. <laughs> so me bad. too. I had the Panthers. I had the Saints to win the division. And worse, I saw. I don't know if you guys ever do this. You look on the app, and the app like the betting apps are ahead of the TV. So I'm like, yeah, I knew Carolina yes. was driving, yes. but then I look up and it's first and yes. twenty for Tampa, I said, or first in, first and ten for Tampa at their own twenty. I was like, what what happened then? You see it happen, and like you know what's going to happen. You already see, see the ending of the movie, and oh, it's just just painful, absolutely. That that happened to me on on Monday night in the uh, in the in the Michigan Washington game, where when Washington went for it on fourth down there at midfield early on, and I, I had the ad just because I was looking for for I, I forget what I was looking looking to bet. I don't know if it was more on Michigan or if it was a a, a, a prop or whatever, but our team total, maybe we might have been Michigan and, and I'm like, Ooh, and I'm like, and I see like, Oh my God, they actually they went for, and I see Mi Michigan ball. I see fourth and one. And then I see or fourth and four, whatever it was. And then I see Michigan ball and I'm texting with a buddy and, and my buddy's like, Oh wow, they're going for it. And I'm like, yeah, they, and they don't get it. And then you see the play and it's, it doesn't say wide open and he misses them. I'm like, wow, it's, yeah, and then sometimes right. the app I, I, sometimes the app gets the play wrong if you follow it enough, or like they they quickly correct it, so you can't even be a hundred percent sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tough way once you start looking because <laughs> that app is a good thirty seconds ahead. That's uh that's it's yeah. not a fun way to watch these games, but it's hard not to look sometimes when no. you're really anxious about these games. At least for me, so, 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 such a shame that Washington lost on Monday night. Yo, so, are you okay? I'm, I'm heartbroken. Yeah, you're, you're okay. Surprised you didn't call out. There's a buddy of mine has a saying. It's a good one. Um, that like in college football for the most part, like you you almost love to hate more than you love to love. Mm -hmm. Like the like the like the 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 love of of like your rival having something terrible happen is better than you like your team winning a football game. And I imagine if Oregon were ever won a championship, I'd feel more stacked than I was on Monday night. But I was Monday night was a was fun for me. It's like hey, it's how, how do you think Auburn 
It was funny. I had a, a buddy of mine in Tennessee, uh, alum yesterday, just texted in all caps and it, ding dong, the witch is dead. Oh, with Saban? Uh, Saban. So it's like, yeah, like bring, bring, bring back DuBose, Coach Fran, and, and the Shula years. I know it's an NFL podcast. We're not doing college football this week. But well, we we'll, we'll do Saban. whatever. We're doing whatever. I, this is a, a fun question for Alabama. It's not even a gambling question, guys, but you, you watch enough. You're very connected to college football. That job before he got there, they did not win a lot of football games. No. Is, this, is Alabama's job good because it's the name of Alabama or because it's Nick Saban? I think, it was, I, I think people are going to come to discover. And again, it depends who they get. And, and, but I, I, I think clearly the answer is Nick Saban. Like, like they, they tried multiple people. Uh, to, to get them back, and they had that the the title in uh, in ninety three. Mike Price was so, Mike Price was so close to being, still there. There it's rolling, baby. Yeah. Could you imagine that Mike Price down? But but no, they they tried they tried numerous people and couldn't couldn't get it right. And I think for a, for a, the longest time, it was like uh, we need to get someone tied into the bear and the and and the bear legacy and history. There, and, and it just really didn't work. And then land land and save, and it just can't. I kind of came in and shook things up it was it was exactly what they needed and I, I think but i don't think they're gonna completely become irrelevant or just kind of of another another team but but i think you, we're not we're not going to be looking at alabama as a uh, as a playoff team i'll play up lock or 11 and 1 12 and 0 sec title every year especially bringing in uh, texas and oklahoma now into the league and and just with Georgia there and how LSU's on the ascent, like I think the timing was right for Nick to get out with a team that he overachieved with and felt good about his ability to coach. But yeah, this is not a, like people are asking, like would Sark leave Texas for Alabama or why would, and I'm like, kind of, I'm like, why kind of would he? I'm like, you can get paid more yeah. probably at texas you were better than alabama this year i, I think you've got a better recruiting base yeah. in like i don't i don't think it's a slam dunk that they they get one of these guys like sarkeesian or or, or, or lanning or, or even lane lane Ole miss had like the best off season that yeah. they've ever had in terms of we win, winning that ball game the portal yep. guys that they brought in like old miss is in a great position now too so like, it's going to be very interesting, I think, to see the direction that this uh, Alabama job goes. Will, do you have any thoughts on uh, Alabama or the, the, the title game or anything? I mean, it's it's the old saying: you never want to be the guy that follows the guy. You want to be the follows the guy that follows the guy. I mean, you don't want to be you don't want to jump right yeah. in. The expectations are going to be so high, so they're going to get somebody. I mean, it, it's it's a great job. It's just you know, it's, it's the there's going to be it, it's going to be impossible to to you know live up to uh, those expectations, live up to what Saban did. It's amazing with Belichick, Saban, all the ties they had, all the winning they've done. There's such natural comparisons. They were on the Cleveland staff together. For them to go out the same day is really kind of eerie, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, and Pete Carroll as well. Yeah. I, I, poor, right. poor Pete Carroll, man, like Hall of Fame level coach, and just no one right. talks about him today because of Saban and Belichick. Um Look, the, the the thing about Sark or Lanning leaving is that, you know, NIL and the transfer portal, I think, have made jobs, quote, unquote, like, better, right? Like, if, like if, look, I'm obviously an Oregon guy, so I'm going to make a case for Oregon. But, look, Eugene is not the fertile recruiting gun Alabama is. But when you pay a player more than someone else, they tend to show up. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and so it makes it, quote, you know, look, do you have to fly further to get to players? Sure, but you're on a private plane. But, you know, if you're Texas right now, your, your NIL program, your ability to get to get football players is on the same level as Alabama right now. And if you're Sark, you just made a playoff. Do you have to go to Alabama to to, to win a championship? Oh. You're, you're building that talent at, at Texas right now. Look, Oregon obviously was not a playoff team this year. They lost to Washington twice. What stinks more than anything else is that all these, you know, SP plus and all the, the, the you know, the analytics numbers sort of have them ranked in the top three to end the season, which again, it's like a drive a stake in my heart right there. Um <laughs> But look, you don't have to beat Alabama to recruit those players like you did 10 years ago. Again, I'm not saying Alabama is, was a worse job than Oregon. I'm just making the case for why taking that job is not what it used to be a, a few years ago. That's it. And it, look, if Lanning were to go, he were to go. It's Alabama. I mean, you don't say really no to Alabama very often, but some of these coaches that have these advantages at their schools with their NIL and their transfer portal and sort of the kind of the advantages of playing these bigger conferences – 
is it worth going to Alabama now to get what you want when you can have that at the school you're currently at? I I I, I don't think he's going to go. I think I think he's going to stay. I think he's in a Ooh. I think he's in a really good so spot. It would. I love my Ducks. I love college football. If Landing were to go, it, it would crush my soul I'm sure for quite a few weeks. I, I'm not going to lie. Like it would be it'd be hard to that stomach. Bears and, and I wouldn't for blame it. him if he went. Of course he is. He <laughs> no. texted me last night. It was like Landing. The first thing he said, "You guys know this. Landing's gone." You mean, I didn't say that. Do you know, do you know I didn't message? say By gone. I, I said I'd be a little uneasy if I were an Oregon yes, fan. <laughs> be right, right now, because Lanning is going to be there for his call. I got, I got I think he's a lot of text it. messages from people that just read, like, bye-bye Lanning, Lanning's gone, Lanning to Alabama, like, from all walks of life, and it it was not a fun few hours. But let's get back to the NFL. Yes, the let's NFL. get back to, Sat- let's get back to Sunday. Just, well, yeah, just yes. quickly, one last thing. The, the, the mechanics of this happening. Saban didn't just wake up yesterday and say, all right, I'm, I'm going to retire. Correct. This was probably in the no, works. No. He probably gave Bama yeah. some notice, so Bama Correct. probably had some wheels in motion. Yes. Do you guys think that's a factor? Like, this this is already a done deal with whoever yes. it's yes. going to be? So Okay. Yeah, so this is also why I believe Lanning is staying at Oregon. And there's some things behind the scenes where I think it's contractually difficult for him to leave. There's some things outside of, like, the buyout. But, you know, th- obviously they have the same agent. They have Sexton. So does everyone else in college football. They probably knew this was happening for a while. Even though there were reports that Nick Saban was still doing his job yesterday, of course he is. He's a, he's a worker. That's a, he's, a, he's a workaholic. Of course he's doing his job still. But this has been happening for weeks, and Lanning has been very adamant, knowing this is probably happening. He's staying at Oregon, right, Barry? I mean, he said that many times over now. I'm staying at Oregon. I'm staying at Oregon. I'm staying at Oregon. So um, we'll see We'll see who they hire. Um, you know, the Kalen DeBoer thing is interesting because he doesn't have a deal yet with Washington. Right. Um, but I don't know if he fits Alabama. So... I don't know who they hire. It'd be interesting. It's going to be very interesting and to get. And I'm glad you said that. Well, about you, this is, didn't just suddenly pop up. I got a, a a text from a buddy of mine who's who's a Georgia guy. He's pretty dialed in at Georgia, and I and he sent me a clip and was telling me that I guess pre SEC championship game there was a hot mic that caught a little private conversation between Kirby and Nick. And oh, wow. it basically ended. It, it was along the lines of like, "Congratulations, you deserve it." Yeah. And it was like kind of indicating. And I guess Nick had been renovated, like fast tracking this renovation on this massive home uh, in Jupiter, Florida. Like I think it was for a while. Like there were signs that this was that this was coming now. There were also signs year, years ago that it might be, might be going, but I think I think there there were even, there was definitely smoke. I think as 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 early as like SEC championship weekend that that this could potentially be something that's in the works. But because Jeff demanded it, we're going to go back to the NFL now. There, that was our, that was our show. little Saturday Monday like interim interlude there. It's a big deal, man. Nick Saban it's a it's a massive deal. Yeah. It's a massive deal. I, we didn't. Even, we wouldn't even talk Belichick. You. You want. You want. Let's talk games, and then we'll get back and maybe talk Belichick at the end, uh, and, and Patriots if if we have any thoughts on that. Like Pittsburgh, Buffalo. We hit on it a little bit earlier. Numbers ten. It feels like I wouldn't want to lay ten with Buffalo, but at the same time, do you think Pittsburgh without JJ Watt and some of the injuries that they have now? Can they get Buffalo off the field? Are we going to trust Mason Rudolph again to go on the road and not turn the ball over? Can 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 Najee and, and Jalen Warren do enough offensively? It, it, it feels like Pittsburgh would be the side that I would play, but at the same time, would you be surprised if this were 27-7, Will? No, I wouldn't be surprised. I just I can't lay 10 when there's going to be 50 mile an hour wins. I don't like laying 10 with Buffalo to begin with. I just don't trust them. Allen's so volatile. He there's so much variance with Allen where, you know, he's a double agent. He's going to turn the ball. I mean, yeah, I think he had just a, almost like two and a half turnovers per game. It's just a ridiculous amount of turnovers. Uh, I just I don't I can't lay double digits. I think that this line is 10 because at nine and a half people can use the seven point teaser to bring it down to two and a half. At 10, mm-hmm. you can't really do that to bring it down to three. So I think it's a little inflated. Tomlin is a dog. 
Uh, I like both quarterbacks under passing yards just because of the wind. I think Allen's around 220 and a half. Mason Rudolph's around 170 and a half. If you go under on both, I just, I could see a game. Remember that Monday night game, Buffalo, New England, like th- two, three years ago, where the wind was so oh. bad, nobody could throw it. Nobody tried to throw it. We might get a game that's that windy, that bad in terms of the weather. Again, we're three, four days out, so you never really know uh, th- this far out. But if the wind is that big of a factor, under passing yards for both guys, I think it's a good look. Mason Rudolph, by the way, is down to 158 and a half now, Will. Oh, uh, wow. People are hammering the under on on, on that number. Yeah, it, it, I saw it yesterday at 161 and a half. I wrote an article for, for, for Fox Sports about uh, taking the under there because you mentioned the wind, what, wind gusts 50 miles an hour they're calling for? Uh, 50? 5 0? That's what it said. Like the gust, yeah. not like, you know, like yeah, it's a gust. So if, if that's the case, and the under drop would open 43, it's at 36 now. Um, so people are, are hammering the under there. I, look, this game to me, with, with, the best chance that Pittsburgh had to win was was T.J. Watt creating havoc on Josh Allen. But Watt's not playing. Like they're just not going to do enough to force Allen to YOLO plays. It's that simple, right? Like if Josh Allen plays the YOLO style he plays at times, Pittsburgh has a chance to keep this game close. If not, they're not going to do it. A lot has been made about Buffalo since they fired um, uh, Ken Dorsey. What's not made enough is their defense is playing much better. Their yes. defense has done a it's a it's a defensive turnaround that we're seeing for the success, not really the offensive. They've been the same team on offense. Defensively, they've been a lot better. They've weathered the storm with the injuries they had. They found replacements. Um, and since the report about uh, McDermott and uh, his his weird uh, motivational <laughs> speeches, they're five and zero, I think. Right? So rally, rally uh, the troops. You know the, the whole Harbaugh thing, like rally around the you know the 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 coach there i i have no play on this game honestly i i just buffalo to me is too inconsistent i missed the number on the under um and so i'm i'm staying away the one the one bet that i did make on this that that i liked was uh james cook to have the most rushing yards uh wild card week at the plus 950 just Ooh. because i think yeah. he's going to get a lot of carries cause because because the conditions uh will will dictate that maybe he's not going to get goal line carries, but uh, I, I could see him breaking off a, a long run or two. And uh, I, I thought plus 950 on Cook to uh, lead wild card weekend in rushing was uh, something that I wanted to get behind. The 430 game on Sunday, uh, Green Bay, Dallas. Actually, a couple of sevens have popped up here, which kind of surprises me a little bit. I wish I, I, I wish I would have waited. I laid seven and a half with, uh, with, with Dallas. Uh, but uh, I see a seven at Circa. I see a seven at South Point. So uh, we'll, we'll see if some other books uh, fall in line. I just look. I, I know you talked about Buffalo's defensive improvement, and I think there actually is something tangible there. Green Bay. I know defensively they played well, but it was against Justin Fields, Vikings backup quarterbacks. I, like I don't know, man. I I, I could see yeah. Dak and Lamb and Paul and that offense just completely going going crazy this week and I mean maybe the Packers will get some points and this could this could be like one of those 41 30 type types of games something like it could be absolute points galore but I like the Cowboys quite a bit here um in in, in this box I thought the I thought the Packers would be a little bit of a uh a public dog as well so we'll see if they are but uh, I don't like the matchup at all here for Green Bay yeah, I'm with you. I want to back the Cowboys, but I will go Cowboys team total over instead, 30 and a half minus 110. Yep. At least that was the number an hour or so ago when I looked. Uh, I just think the Cowboys look, they're a machine at home, 37 and a half points per game, eight and oh at home. The thing about laying the points, their last few home games, I mean, remember Seattle on a Thursday night, they didn't cover, they could have lost. Uh, Saturday night against the Lions, didn't cover, really could have, should have lost. Uh, so they haven't been as dominant the last month or so. I worry about the seven and a half. You just worry about the backdoor touchdown. But to me, Dallas is going to get their points. Just just such a machine on offense at home. And if you look at Green Bay, they're kind of middle of the road defensively. And they haven't played a lot of good offense. First of all, there aren't that many good offenses in the NFL this year. But they haven't played most of them. They didn't play the Cowboys this year. They didn't play the Dolphins. They didn't play the Ravens. They didn't play the 49ers. They didn't play the Bills. So like you said, it's a lot of you know the fields and the Nick Moans of the world. Now, they have played well on offense, so I think Green Bay will get their points. This should be a fun game, back and forth, lots of points. Well, I'm sure plenty of people, including me, are going to put the Cowboys in their teasers. So I I don't disagree with that. I would think Dallas wins this football game, but the 7.5 does scare me a little bit. Um, 
sort of two thoughts on this game. I, I like your team total over, Will, because it's a Joe Barry defense the, the, you know, the Cowboys are playing. I mean, Bryce Young put up 30 points in the Packers and Good got point. shut out two weeks in a row. <laughs> like, like it just the Packers defense is is too simplistic. Um, and the Cowboys, I, I think, will eat them up. And the second point about this game, and, um, you know, we talked about this earlier, or we will talk about this bear a little bit more in, in, in your best bet. The Packers are the fifth youngest team since 1970 to play in a playoff game. It's they just haven't done this before, you know. The coaching staff has obviously. This is new for everyone. It's not new for the Cowboys. They're on the road. They haven't done this before. We talked about this or earlier in the show. Like I just think that's a, a, a factor in this game. And if the Cowboys sort of get up big in this game, their pass rushers can go to work. Right, the Cowboys play from ahead really well. I saw the Micah Parsons over three quarters of a sack. So basically you need one sack it was like minus 180. I'd like, no, I'm not touching that one. Um, like they just expect, you know, the, the, this game to go a certain way. And I think the Cowboys team total over is, is the probably one of the, the better bets to make for this one. Yeah, I think we're all kind of seeing it the same way. And then the, uh, the final game Sunday night uh, Rams at lions. And, and then have you heard that Matthew Stafford is going to uh, Detroit for the lions first home game in in quite some time, I don't. I wanted to make sure you guys were <laughs> aware that I hadn't heard that mentioned this week at all. Lions seems a little cheap here, minus three. Do you think so? I mean, that, I don't want to lead you well, but 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 three seems three is a lot of respect. I think for the Rams here is it too much respect for the Rams? I think you're the first person to express any sort of optimism towards the Lions that everybody loves this Rams team. They're so trendy. And we've talked about this matchup just here and there for the last few weeks. We knew it was possible. Stafford going back to Detroit. And we're thinking, all right, maybe the, maybe the Rams would be a nice little underdog pick there, getting four and a half, maybe five points. The fact that it's three does feel a little dismissive to Detroit. Detroit's been the better football team all year. They're a play away from being the two seed. They probably, you know, could have should have won that game in Dallas a couple weeks ago. That would have put them at the two. The Rams, I know it's a nice season. They've overachieved. They're good on offense, but I still don't think they're very good on defense. That's going to be a rocking home crowd. They haven't had a playoff game in three decades. So I, I like Detroit. I think this line's a little short. The storyline to me is great. And you mentioned, well, you don't have to wager in every game. This is a game I just want to watch without, I think, putting some money on unless there's some live opportunities here in this spot. I mean, the storyline, obviously, Bear mentioned it, right? The, the Lions... Best quarterback returning uh, on a different team for the Lions' first home playoff game since 1993. Uh, it's a it's a remarkable storyline. I mean, this was the only game to put in Sunday night. I mean, it's a fantastic decision to to make this happen. Um, the interesting thing is if if Laporta can't go, the Lions' uh, tight end. Do you look at Ed Moore and Amon Ross St. Brown prop? Uh, you know who fills that role for the Lions if he's out? Um, you, the catch has got to go somewhere. Uh, so I'm curious if that's a spot to, to find some prop. Um, you know, do, do you put it on, on one of the other wide receivers? Do you, do you put it on more in a running back, the backup tight end? Because, you know, those those passes got to go somewhere. Uh, that's sort of the only thought I have. I will say, though, guys, in a lot of these games we've talked about so far, we've picked a better coach, a better quarterback. McVay and Stafford are the better coach, a better quarterback, right? So, it, now, it doesn't mean they're going to win or lose, but look, look what we've done so far. Ch Chiefs, right? We, we think the Chiefs are going to win. Um, we think, obviously, look, it's not a, no, no surprise to Cowboys at this point, right? Uh, the Buffalo is a big spread. I get that. So I'm just saying, I think, you know, coach and quarterback matter a lot. And in this situation, that is, that does give the Rams, I think, a tiny bit of advantage in this game. Is it enough? I'm not sure. I, to me, I just sit this one out. Just watch this game. Live wager, maybe. A couple props here and there. Uh, but that's the way I feel about this one. Yeah, I, I have a feeling. I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I have a feeling I might be sitting there on on Sunday night with a little live wager uh, on the on the Lions. Uh, any, I mean, I, I don't know if there really is a betting angle with with Bill Belichick and in, in his retire. I don't want to say retirement. I'm sure it's not a retirement. But a couple of things. Do do we? <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. I got so excited for the text you just sent. <laughs> I, I bet you did. You didn't get that one last night. So yeah. uh, it, it, it'll, it's good to be back in action. Um, do we think, or is there anyone who may think this, is there too much of a, I don't want to say overreaction, but like are people just maybe may having too much of a leap of faith that there is this incredible market out there for Bill Belichick to coach their team in 2024, Jeff? Or or is he like truly 
a hot commodity. Are people just kind of assuming that he's going to be like wanted and desired in 2024 at 72 years old, whatever he's going to be, or like, are there teams really out there that are gung ho on bringing him in? Well, the reports are Atlanta is gung ho. Here's my, my Belichick thought about sort of where he has as a coach. I believe he can still coach guys. I think there's very, there's evidence that he can still coach. The problem is he can't choose players, right? His downfall in New England was that he started choosing the players. And that's not what he's good at. He's not, especially on the offensive ball. Defensive ball, he's, Christian Gonzalez was draft pick this year, was going to probably win defensive player before he got hurt. I mean, rookie defensive player of the year. So to me, it's about if he goes somewhere, let's say Atlanta is the example, is if he goes there and he's willing to not have 100% player control, to let someone else choose the players, obviously within that fit the scheme that he wants, the guys he has reviewed, that can work. Remember, Andy Reid, guys, in Philly, his downfall, too, was just he was choosing the players. Comes to Kansas City and lets John Dorsey and Brett Veach have a lot of say in the players that are chosen. If Belichick does that in Atlanta or anywhere else, guys, I think he could still be a very good head coach. But if he won't, if he won't do that, if he has to go somewhere that gives him full control of the roster, he's not going to win anymore. And it's a little. Think if you look at. Go ahead, Will. No, it's a little like when Brady left to go to Tampa. It has to be a specific situation. Get in, get out. It's, it's not a five, six year rebuild. He's 70, what, 71, 72 years old, just like Brady was, what, 40, 41. This is go to a ready made ish situation where you have some offensive pieces in, part, in place, coach up the defense, give them a, a good, you know, X's and O's coach, and make this a quicker fix. Yeah. Like you go to Washington in a long rebuild, or you go to some of these other teams. I just don't see it. This, this is, I mean, he, I can't see him coaching five, six years from now. This is go somewhere that's somewhat ready-made, get in, get out, and win. I, I was going to say, and it kind of gets along the po of Jeff's point of like GM and, and like Telesco kind of being out there doing interviews for other jobs, like, would that kind of lead you to believe that the Chargers have kind of said, hey, you're, we're going to bring in a head coach that is going to have, like, player control as well, which might make... I thought they fired him, too. Did they fire him? I thought they fired both, right? I can't remember. You know, I think you're right. They did. The you're Raiders right. fired sorry. both. I know that. Yeah, no, you, you're, yeah, now that I'm thinking, yeah, they did, yeah. And they fired both, so that's why so, he's interviewing for jobs. I was going to say, he's interviewing for jobs, he doesn't have a job. I'll, I'll, blame, I'll blame that on my drug and my... I, I uh, think, my, 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 my oxy-induced coma post a... The, shoulder surgery and, and, and the, missing that. So the I Chargers are fascinating, right, guys? Because the Chargers have Justin Herbert with an old roster and no cap space. I mean, is that something that that coach really wants? Washington is really fascinating to me because Washington has a ton of, had ton, ton of cap yes. space. Former Chargers GM Tom. Tom Former Chargers. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So I, I um, apologize for my. The Commanders have a ton of cap space. We'll be able to draft a young quarterback, and I mean that you have an ownership group that I think wants to win, obviously. I don't know where Belichick ends up. I'd imagine it happens soon if he wants to be a coach, that the press conference is going to be here shortly after we get off the uh, recording this. I'm curious mm -hmm. to see how that goes uh, for him. But uh, look, the best to ever do it, uh, him and Saban retire within 24 hours. Uh, hope, hope they go have a drink somewhere and enjoy their, their retirement for maybe a couple of weeks. I mean, Saban won't be retired for long. He'll have a TV job, and Belichick will probably be yeah. in the NFL too. Yeah, it, 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 sounds, it sounds about right. So, yeah. Well, anything else we, uh, we missed? Uh, whether NFL or any, anything out there, golf, tennis, the NBA. I mean, you got, got anything you want to uh, share with the people? Should we extend an invite to Saban to join our pod? I mean, I hope it, as long as it doesn't affect yes. my, you know, I, 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 I got my, my money. That's fine with me. I, I'm, I'm good with that. I can, I can, I can reach out and see if we can make that sure. happen. If you want to do it by zoom every week, we do that. But we, I mean, I'll gladly extend this desk if you want to have them sit right in between Jeff and I. You know, he's going to be, he's gonna be great. A little missing me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think we did just fine without Sammy. Yeah. So he, he, exactly. sa Sammy out, Saban in. Saban yeah, in. I, I think Breaking that's news. probably the book. Sa Sammy out, Saban <laughs> in. That's probably the best way to uh, to end this week's Sammy game. Sammy can go coach we'll Alabama. Appreciate you, bud. We'll... <laughs> he, man, well, he, 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 they he's might have to work their way down the list. If they, they, get, they get some no's, they might have to... Uh, Ultimately, get their way down to Sammy. Say, he can, I think Sammy can handle that job. You can, can bring the bartender with him. Yeah, yeah. If he can go 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 ten bar right there, uh, right, right near near, near to plenty of places for the go to uh, in, in his in his free uh, Irish Irish pub so is a good place down there in uh, T ten. We can get the bartender job at Innisfree. Deal done. Done deal. We'll 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 make that happen. Well.
Appreciate you. Talk soon. All right, everyone, we're back from the gambling group chat. Let's recap the one wager Bear has made before we head into our, our best bets for the week. The one wager Bear has made so far is Tampa Bay plus three. They're home hosting the Eagles. Walker, we're getting Monday Night Football. As you heard, obviously, in gambling group chat, there's a lot of other wagers we like around the sport. And we also have Bear, our best bets now. What is your best bet? Wild card weekend. It's the Cowboys. We talked about it in the in the gambling group chat. All the reasons why. Uh, down to I love it now. It's seven. If I'm able to not have to uh, put official an official pick in with with the hook, I will do that. Even though I made a real bet at seven and a half, yeah. I might have to go back and make a real bet at seven as well. Um, get a little more. But uh, I, I think this Cowboys and I, I I agree with what you said and what Will said about maybe the Cowboys team total might be the better play. Yeah. But uh, I, I think Dallas comes out and wins easily this week. You know, I mentioned the youth thing. I think that really matters in this game. And Joe Barry's defense is so bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, if the Packers get down 14 points in the third quarter, are they making a comeback in this game? Probably not, you know? No, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. So I think I don't think the back door covers an issue here. I will say that Jordan Love has played a lot better the back half of the season. He's improved. I think he's gotten to the point where, like, the Packers might have to consider giving him a franchise contract. He's played really well down the pitch. I think 18 interceptions, one touchdown, last six games. To the last 19 games. He's, he's been last really nine games. Yeah, he's, he's been really he's good. Been really good. Um, all right. My best bet is the under in Arrowhead this weekend. Under 44 between the Chiefs and the Dolphins, guys. Uh, the Chiefs games, the last six of them, have not gone over 44 points. They, they don't score a lot of points anymore, do the Chiefs. And they play really good defense. The Dolphins, for the most part, play really good defense. They're really beat up on offense. They're not going to score, I think, as much as we've seen in the past. And right now, updated. I just saw this tweet right now, Barry. Ready? Talk to me. The wind chill in Kansas City Saturday night will be dangerously cold via the National Weather Service. The latest forecast approaches a wind chill of negative 30 degrees. When it is windy, take the under, right? The wind affects the ball being thrown in the air. Now, Mahomes, not so much, but Tua for sure. To, the ball's going to go to Tyreek Hill and just go and die right down. <laughs> you know they are. You're laughing because you know them right. Arm punts. Um, and I think 44 will not be there on Sunday, on Saturday night, I should say. Probably not. So uh, there we go. Best bet for both of us. Also, want to remind you guys, it's not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for Wild Card Weekend. Just download the Fox Sports app right now. And make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. We wish you guys the best of luck on your wagers this weekend. Yeah. Six games. Um, you know, I, I have some wagers. I have some not. I might have some action on every game in some form or fashion with props. This usually week. usually li- live is, is the way to go as well. You mentioned props. There are two other. I mentioned the Ooh. James Cook prop, the lead. The, yeah. the, you mentioned the Mike Evans specifically yeah. for this weekend. But a couple of weeks back, I mentioned the 49ers to win the NFC. Uh, they were, it was around my, it's minus 125 now is basically the yeah. price that uh, you can find. So they basically will have a game next week, potentially against the Eagles. If form holds, it would be them. If not, it could be someone else. Through the Rams, so that'd be a fun game. Right? I mean, I'd rather play the Eagles than the Rams, Absolutely. probably. Or the but Bucks. they should <laughs> win. They should win that yeah. game. <clears throat> and then you're going to be probably a six point favorite or so, maybe against against Dallas. Yep. So if you're laying 125 to win the NFC, and then you're going to be hosting the NFC Championship game, you're going to be bigger price than minus 125. Yes. If you want to play it back and just guarantee a profit, it gives you the opportunity to do that. Good idea. Um, and then I played Brock Purdy at plus 550 to have the most passing yards uh, in, in the playoffs. It's a team that can get to the Super Bowl. That's in a single game. No, no, no. For the, for the entire postseason. Even though he's missing one game. Well, I'm assuming he's going to get to the Super Bowl. Oh, Super Bowl. I'm sorry. Yes. We'll give him three games. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. So you're going to get basically a game next week against potentially a terrible defense in the East. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, And then you're going to get a game that could be a high scoring game that he already ripped apart Dallas. Okay. uh, And and then you potentially get uh, the Super Bowl game. So I I think. I like it. Okay. I mean, Dak is the favorite. And I mean, so, but um, I'm, uh, and and Lamar was there, but I'm going to, I, I thought 550 was a, a good I like it, yeah, because Dak's the favorite because if they make the Super Bowl, he has extra yeah, game. Yeah, exactly, which makes total sense. Yeah. So. All right, we did it. We, 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 did, we did it for this week. And Dan Lanning has not been hired by Dan Lanning has not been hired, but he's not been hired by Alabama yet. I'm just refreshing social media every if, four if, 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 he do, if Dan does go, will we... Uh, I'm going to... Are you, you going to apply for the Oregon head coaching job? I don't know what I'm going to do, buddy. I don't think he's going to. I think you're going to be okay. 
Oh, a tweet. Uh -oh, uh oh, we have a tweet. Dan Lanning, staying in Oregon. Sources tell 24 7 Sports. There you go. I say nothing. Oh. I told you. Woo. Wait, what, what's better than an exhale? Like we had an exhale at the start of the show that Washington didn't win the national championship. We got an exhale at the end of the show that your head coach is staying. Oh, I, mean, I like this guy. I mean, on that note, we're going to wrap it up and we're going to get some lunch. And I'm looking forward to having yes. lunch with you and lunch with Vic once we get out of here. So for Jeff, for Will, and myself, thanks again for listening, downloading, subscribing, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your pods, our YouTube show. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.